I teach the ethics and values class and it's most meaningful to me as a teacher because I actually started it in 1986. So the students who don't like that class should come in and visit with me about it and <laughs> wonder with me why they're required to take it. But the reasons why they are is that it helps them examine who they are. It helps them kind of pull up their ethics and values by the roots and examine them and plant them themselves. And so our students are at least 18 and they really need to define for themselves why they do the things they do, why they make these choices that um, are so important. And I think it's a real honor for the Ethics and Values course to be the core course for the humanities because it's interdisciplinary, it represents all the humanities areas well, it's just a very good vehicle that helps students become a well-educated person. It helps them to um, critically think, to speak well, to write very well and to understand that there's a big world around them and they understand different kinds of scholarship and that there will be challenges in their lives and you know how, how will they hold up to these challenges. So my favorite class to teach is the uh, uh, Philosophy 2050 Ethics and Values. I like to make sure that I engage the students in the topic so it's very rewarding when, number one, they come to class fully prepared and we can have good discussions. It's very rewarding when I'm not up there lecturing, but when I'm learning a lot from the students and what they've come away with from their, their different scholarly readings uh, that I've given them. I like that they're challenged to read and some of these readings are very hard. It takes them about four pages an hour to read but I like that they can engage themselves in the reading and then engage the class in their understanding of what they read. And that we can have tolerance for one another's diverse points of view. So it's really exciting for me when we can get a very rousing uh, discussion going in class and that we lose track of time. We don't even notice what time we have on the clock. So um, that, would, that would have to be my first great thing. The next one is when I have a paper turned in in that class that's just solid, where the student writes well, they understand where the ethical implications are of a case study I might have assigned to them, and that they can um, fully integrate their ideas as well as the ethical uh, applications. And so that would be a second area that I enjoy. And a third is when they keep in touch and ask me to write a letter of recommend or say, hey, I just got accepted to med school, wanted you to know. Mm -hmm. So I think lots of rewards. Well, one that I'm really proud of is the grant history that I've had with National Endowment for the Humanities and the U.S. Department of Education. And I, my first grant came in uh, 1986 from uh, NEH to start this ethics and values class to bring in scholars of national reputation and to really help our faculty to learn how this class should be taught at a level of national rigor and also to help the community know that this was something that was important for all of us to know when there can be a lot of homogeny in the area and it's important for our students to understand there are many points of view. And so it was really exciting to me that NEH loved that idea and that they continued to fund my projects, which is a rather unusual thing. So um, I received a grant from NEH. The first one was three years. The second one was uh, three more years, which was to bring uh, science and history of civilization into the uh, ethics arena. And then I received a grant from FIPSI, the Fund for the Improvement of Post-Secondary Education, and that was for ethics across the curriculum. And at that point then we were able to start um, the Center for the Study of Ethics and it protected, uh, so to speak, that every discipline across campus would be looking at the professional and practical applications of ethics and helping their students know the kind of ethical problems that they'd find in the world of work. So that was outstanding. And then FIPSI uh, did another unprecedented thing. They 
they funded me three more times, which is just really unusual for Pipsy. They don't usually give a grant, and one of the grants was to start the organi organization. It's a national organization. Twelve years ago, we started the Society for Ethics Across the Curriculum, and also the journal Teaching Ethics. And so our first editor of Teaching Ethics was Brian Birch, mm -hmm. followed by David Keller, mm -hmm. and now um, I edit the journal with my husband, Michael Pritchard. Mm -hmm. So um, we've had a national journal then located on our campus for more than 12 years, and mm -hmm. it's really excited, exciting to have this peer-reviewed journal. Um, I received a couple more grants from National Endowment for the Humanities and other organizations that wanted to continue funding an ethics program. And uh, so that's been a very rewarding part of my scholarship. And much of my um, uh, article writing, as well as book publication, has been in this area of interdisciplinary ethics. Um, I think my favorite liberal arts area is philosophy. I'm very much an interdisciplinarian, and so I enjoy taking some of the different philosophers in um, uh, that are very strong in ethics, and then also show how these philosophers have made a mark in literature and history and religion. And so for me, I really love the liberal arts, uh, even the sciences and social sciences, and I love the ability um, to use philosophy and also use ethics as a way of thinking through very difficult issues that we have going on in our society and the world around us.